Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Hertz, Tropica Trade Group, and it is Monday, August 1st. So first uh, new day of the month uh, that we had and, um, you know, some pretty choppy price action, which, um, you know, my take is that, um, you know, we had such a big week last week and, oh, you know, a really... Uh, high performance for the month of July that, um, you know, we're due for some chop today and we could be due for some chop overall this week. Um, so we'll just kind of have to see how that plays out. Um, risk disclaimer in front of you, everything that we're going to be talking about here is for information purposes only. I'm not giving out any advice or recommendations. Um, please read the full risk disclaimer here. Theme of the day that I had was, you know, um, this also kind of uh, went with the theme of a bit of risk off today. I would also have uh, the cryptos down today too. Did I spell that right? I don't think I did. Cryptos. Um, so we'll go through a couple examples, but you know, one of the things that stood out to me was yes, uh, the move in bonds today up 2.2 percent. I and I have the the um, the ten year yields here too, so you can see what's going on here. But um, the yields are moving yields are moving lower. I, I think that this is a this is a pretty good thing. Bonds are rallying. Um, you know, that could be on the back of this political move with um, you know that's going on with Taiwan and. Um, you know, hearing back and forth with what China is doing. So, you know, it, it, the bond rally could have been associated with that, but regardless, um, yields are moving lower, which should be a, a decent positive for stock. So that's one, I would say one good thing, but you could definitely categorize that as kind of a risk off move for the day. Um, VIX was also up decently for the day. Again, you know, coming from a pretty low level uh, from what we've seen over the last, what, six weeks, uh, where the VIX was at 33, 34, now seeing it, you know, get all the way down to about 21. Well, it rose up today uh, to about 22.84. So again, one day is not a trend, right? Um, but something that we'll keep an eye on for the VIX. Um, certainly, you know, a move higher isn't that unexpected for for one day, especially after the move that it's been made. But we want to keep an eye on this to see if it's if it's more than um, you know more than one day move, and you know I guess probably a move back above twenty four would get me a little bit concerned. Um, I mentioned cryptos; they were also down decently. Um, you know, not anything too alarming here. Bitcoin down four um, percent. You see, you could see a new value area for the, for the month, which we'll go over for the S and P as well. Um, Ethereum also down six percent. Um, that one is in value, but still above the 50 day moving average and, you know, just re retracing this candle. So, again, um, that China, that kind of, um, you know, just concluded today was was a lot of risk off. Um, there was also if you look at the, some of the sector performers for the day, you can kind of see the same thing play out. You know, there was everything, reta everything retail or consumer was fairly strong today. XRT was your best performing sector. That was up 2.3%. Remember, that's the equally weighted retail ETF. So you've got a little bit of everything uh, in that ETF in terms of consumer names. Staples were up 1.2%. Where did consumer discretionary finish for the day? Why don't I, why don't I see that? That's not jumping out. At one point, they were about even for the day. But I think consumer staples won out the day. Um, uh, discretionary was only up about a half a percent. Um, things like Tesla did give back early gains for the day. Um, other areas also, you know, so you can see by the performance for the day, SPY down just 30 basis points. The Q's flat and, um, and IWM was, was flat as well. A little bit of outperformance there over the session, but um, couldn't make it through the um, through the through the highs towards the end of the day. Also, the home builders have been strong. They've they've um, continued to surprise. Um, I think for the for the most part, underperformers. Uh, the solar group gave back about two point five percent from hefty gains from last week. And actually, all energy. You know, the performance last week was uh, was pretty amazing. Um, both. You know, traditional energy, XLE, OIH were up huge last week, as well as solar. Um, those were amongst your underperformers. So kind of just a, a reversion back from really that high outperformance from last week. Let's take a look at some charts here in the, the S&P. Um, you know, as always, you know, new month, new value area. Uh, so this is a bit tough. 
um, I think on this daily chart, and you know, I was going over this in the in the member video on Sunday, but there's not a lot to to really kind of hang your hat on here. Um, we're decently above value to start the month. Um, we're above the five period moving average, so the short we're continuing to um, you know be above the the short term moving average. So we've got a short term uptrend and a longer term downtrend. Um, so there's not really much that you can kind of say from here. Um, the one thing to note was on Friday, we took out one of these shorter term version point of controls from back in here. The next one's at 4211, right? And we're kind of caught in the middle here. So we're, we're basically looking for some direction, right? Notice again, where this version point of control uh, is from, you know, it's, it's from this consolidation before we kind of went lower here. So we're, we're at, I would say, a, a pivotal area. Um, and let's see which way we want to go. Right. And, and maybe small caps, you know, might be kind of leading the, the move a little bit, but um, that remains to be seen. Um, also, you could see from the breadth to the bottom left, it was a choppy day. Right. NASDAQ also took out um, remember that version point of control was taken out in the SP on Friday. The version point of control taken out in NASDAQ was taken out. Uh, today, right? And uh, that's where you went this morning. So again, um, there's nothing really too much to conclude here because, you know, we'll look at the NASDAQ on the daily too, but we're just, we're right in the middle of, you know, the next version point of control, which could be a, a you know, a place to take some, some short-term profits and the top of value. What I'm kind of looking for is either continuation, and we don't really have any evidence yet that we're that we're breaking um, down because there's nothing really below this 20 period moving average. And on the S and, and on the daily chart, uh, the price action is above the five period moving average. So there there's no sell signal. I was talking about this. What we also do at at uh, Tribeca Trade Group, we do a midday video, and and I was talking to a, a member who was talking about, oh, geez, well, should I short here? Um, you know, we and I said, no, you don't. You know, in my opinion, right? Um, you don't really have a signal to the downside. You could try to anticipate, but that's a whole nother game. Um, it, some, you know, I think a lot of times traders don't like to just sit. Right. Um, you know, and the money is made, uh, you know, that we know for very popular expression in trading, right, is that the that is that the money has been is made and it's just sitting, right? And not over trading. And I believe that was Jesse Livermore, right, who um who from one of his books uh that quote came from. But if I'm wrong, please correct me. But yeah, the, the money is made in sitting, right? Not trade, you know, sometimes and that's one of the hardest things to do in trading is to just kind of sit. And sometimes you just don't get really good, you know, trade signals. And um, you, you know, the more that you kind of sometimes sit in front of the screens on a day like this, sometimes it gets you into a little bit of trouble with over trading. But um yeah, sometimes it's better just not to do much when when you don't have um, you know, any, anything major going on. And then finally, just Russell futures um, also, of you know, so, so again, we, we, we came to some overhead supply levels, right. And now it's the question of wh which way is the price action going to go. Right. And there's nothing wrong um, by the way, too, with a little bit of just back and filling right after, um, you know, getting short-term overbought. Okay. So I think that's for me, you know, that's the best thing to do is just kind of sit tight um, we do have some more economics coming out this week, right? So, and, right? So ISM manufacturing came in today, 52.8, right? So prices paid came in less than expected. Uh, tomorrow we get Jolt's jobs opening. And then on Wednesday, I think this will probably, uh, this has a chance to move the market. This is the ISM services, 53 and a half is what they're looking for. And then on Friday, we get um, another jobs, uh, monthly jobs uh, report, just to kind of give you a sense, because I'm a little bit light on setups today. Um, a couple of names that I thought were, were really interesting today was Boeing. Um, this will be a name that I'll be watching tomorrow too, because again, this is also made, made its like trip halfway, you know, sideways all last week and um, could be headed up to 168. In Boeing, uh, excuse me, 178 in Boeing, right? That also lines up pretty well with what you see on the daily chart, um, getting closer to that 200 day moving average. So, again, that's not ba a bad little trade. Uh, and that's something that I'll be watching tomorrow. Um, a couple of trades that I did today, you know, just kind of looking for some things that 
jumped off the page to me. There wasn't that many. This Coupang, right, which again is in a downtrend. Um, I'm just basically looking for this thing to to get a little bit further up here to about 1884. Um, I did take a target in that trade. I also put on some LYV, but LYV reports later in the week. Right, so does Airbnb, which will be interesting reports, but it basically got to where I was looking for, and it almost got there in the first uh, hour of the day, uh, which is where this is the first trade that I put on for the day. So I just kind of bailed on it. Right, um, I did put on a, uh, a couple other ones too. Pepsi, I took a target in. Um, this trade is where this was a trade that I put on last week, and um, continuing to work pretty well. I think the last. Um, my last target is probably going to be 178 for this. Um, but the the bottling companies, you know, Celsius, the news came out today about Celsius. This thing jumped 11%. Um, took out this version point of control, which was my upside target. Um, I did get out of this trade, so I'm I'm no longer um, in Celsius. Uh, so very nice if you were in it for today. Um, Decker's was a was a trade that I talked about over the weekend. Um, I like this setup, you know, again, playing with the strength. Right? This is a name that I played um, a couple of weeks ago, right? And then we had an earnings trade on this for on Friday that I took profits in. And, um, you know, very easy setup here, you know, right around the 200 day moving average is my uh, stop. I, and I like the easy ones. I like the easy setups, right? Penn is another one that I think um, I'll probably take off the swing trade that I have on this one, but um, I like when there's catalysts, you know, so for example, the gambling stocks, you know, specifically the, the online ones like to run into a big, you know, a big sporting event. Um, so what do we have a month away from us? Or now I think a little bit less than a month away, but we have football season, right? So th I think this is a great time to be looking at some of these, some of these names uh, in here. Uh, again, I, I, I might have to take the trade off and then put it back on after they report earnings, right? Um, and I think the chart looks a little bit better here than um, the DraftKings, right? Which was up as well, 2.8%. Actually did okay um, today, but this is also going to report this week too. So again, a lot of things, a lot of trades have been kind of complicated um, lately. Certainly last week was complicated. Um, as I mentioned, energy stocks underperformed. This is another chart that I like too, but they report tomorrow after the close, right? So this is uh, Oxy, all right? Um, what else? And I took off one trade from last week that wasn't really panning out, which was Wells Fargo, right? It usually right now, you know, if I see more choppier markets, you'll see me do that. I'll get into a, I'll get into a couple trades um, in the morning and I'll either take something off that I was, a, that I was originally long, um, or I'll take off one of the trades that I put on and just make it into a, you know, a day trade like the LYB, because overall I, I don't, you know, I want to see a little bit more direction out of the overall market. Um, and I want to see something a little bit better than what we saw today in terms of, you know, the VIX rising and, and bonds really, you know, heavy to the upside. All right. So plenty of time. We're just at the beginning of the month. Um, I'm in no rush, especially with a weaker seasonal month of August. You know, I, even if we do kind of come back and check back. You know, so, good. so again, it's good to have these things in, in your mind about what you're going to do, right? If this S&P does come in a bit and starts to kind of check back in here, right? Last week's dip was a great place to get long. So um, again, we, you know, I don't think that we have to get that. We could see more digestion, but I want to have plenty of cash available, you know, plenty of big cash cushion, which I do, uh, if we start to head back into the top of value. All right. So that's something that I'll definitely be watching. A couple of the, the you know, there's been some really nice earnings uh, moves, Arista Networks. Um, you know, I, I didn't, I thought about playing this one. I didn't because I, it made such a nice move over the last week, but um, this is going to be advancing further. And it did take out one of those version point of controls right at 124. So 124 is going to get you right about here. You know, and maybe all the way upside target would be that 128. And then pins, which I know seems to get a lot of attention. Um, I don't really understand the company, so I, I didn't play this. But um, Elliott has a big position, is now the biggest uh, stockholder in the name. So you've got that institutional support uh, and made a nice move here um, up about to, to 24. 
uh, dollars. But um, yeah, the results were were okay. But it just kind of shows you at this point, some of these names that are rallying are now, you know, are rallying on on bad news. So it seems like a lot of the uh, a lot of that bad news has been priced in to some of these stocks, many of which are starting to turn up again. Um, INMD was on our watch list, uh, was one of the names that I included on the on the member watch list. I didn't play it today. But here's another example, right? So starting to kind of move up, you know, I don't know if this is enough of a level one base, but you can kind of see that we're starting to make this move. And um, ultimately, I think 38 bucks would be a, a nice little scalp trade, another $4 from here. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.